Thanks for Kristen. Thanks for oh. Oh, Down. Thank you for that quiet time for writing. Um, you have just been writing on two, one of two prompts um, to prepare you for the short story that we're going to read today. And um, as you dig into that story, you will find out how those prompts are connected to it. But what I want to start us off with here today uh, is the objective. And um, for today's lesson, you're going to identify. To identify means to um, find and to name. And that issue of naming is going to be an important part of identifying. Several themes in a complex short story, and you're going to create a theme statement about one of them. And in this case, um, when you create a theme statement, you're really going to be making something um, because a theme statement is not usually explicit in the text. Explicit means um, outside, visible. Um, so you're going to be creating something that's implicit. It's an act of interpretation. And we have been um, using this term theme in a number of the works we do that we've been reading in class so far. And I would like to um, see if I can get a volunteer to take a stab at a definition of theme. If you had to define theme, how would you define it? Theme is like a, like a big umbrella. It's something we can take away from the story and apply to other things around the world and other stories. OK, so a big umbrella. Yeah. And I like that word big in there. Um, anybody else want to add on to this um, definition here? Central issue. Ah, or a central issue. Great. Um, a unifying thread. Ooh, a unifying thread. Nice. Um, anybody else want to add on to this? Let's start pulling that together. Um, I'm seeing some really important words in there. It's big. It's a takeaway. From the story, and I want you to hang on to that takeaway, um, and I'll get to you in a second, Ian. Um, it's central, and it's something that is a unifying thread that pulls things together. Um, and Ian, were you going to add something here? Yeah, it was. It was previously said, but it hasn't been posted on the board. But uh, yeah. it can apply to uh, other situations around the world. Yeah. 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 So not just the story alone. Nice. Um, I'm going to take this part a second because um, one of the things we're going to do today is distinguish between theme and theme statement. And I personally want to distinguish that because as a reader, um, searching for theme, identifying theme, um, is often the first step towards making a theme statement. And I'm going to just um, highlight here a couple of really important words that you pointed to. Big. Um, a theme is something big. It's something important in the text. Um, here's that something also. Um, something big and important in the text. It's central, and it's not just the story alone. And I'm going to kind of pull those together um, into the following. Um, a theme is an important, and I would add the word recurring. We want to find recurring. What does that mean? Something that happens over and over. Yeah, happens over and over. Um, idea in a story. Nice. Now, I want to tell you that a lot of these 
things that you've put up here really have to do with the statement. This issue that it applies to another situation, not just the story alone. Um, that it um, is a central issue or a unifying thread. And one of the ways that I think about um, a theme statement is that a theme statement is what the text says about that that oh, that big recurring idea. And somebody said it's not just the story alone, it applies to other situations. Um, it's like a lesson or a moral, something that you can take away and apply that um, can be expressed as a lesson or a moral. Nice. If you want to give an example of a theme that they might have noticed in one of the texts we've read for the class so far, can you see it? Yeah, thank you. Um, can you give an example of a theme, a big idea that happens again and again in one of the texts that we've read in the unit so far? One can expand literacy in a number of ways. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so let, no, we'll get to that. Sorry. Okay. You're, you're pretending to be my student, okay. so you can shut this off in a second. Oh, I thought you were um, in our class. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Great. So a theme would be literacy. Yeah, yeah, great. And of the um, <clears throat> texts that we've read so far, what are some of the things, how would you turn that into a theme statement? What are some of the things that texts that we've been reading have said about literacy that might be a takeaway or a moral or something important? So we're going to give that a stab. It's not necessarily always important to read every word of the text, but that understanding the text and applying its message afterwards is the most important thing. Okay. Yeah. Fully understand the text. And usually, if we're creating a theme statement, we also want to bring in that word literacy. So could you bring that word literacy into that kind of a theme statement? Either by substituting or redefining one of them. Oh, would you share your idea? Yes. So, Parker, thanks. Um, I just take Betsy's statement and replace its with literacy is. Mmm. Okay. Or maybe. So literacy is, is not necessarily. Yeah. Ah, nice. Literacy is not necessarily, um, or for literacy, it's not always necessary, or literacy does not always require. Yes, literacy does not always require uh, every word to be uh, reading every word. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, there we go. Okay. So you pick a uh, In order to fully understand a text? Yes. Nice. I agree with that. Nice. So I would argue that you have just created a really, I just erased part of the That's okay. That's okay. a really beautiful theme statement. Um, taking a big idea in some of the texts that we've read um, and expanding it to say something important about that meaningful, a kind of lesson that we can learn or take away from that idea. Uh, what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to share with you, kind of preview, a couple of short stories. You're going to have a choice for which short story you read. And so, in front of you should be two copies of short stories. The first one is written by Italo Calvino. Um, he is an Italian writer, born in Cuba, lived in Turin, Paris, and Rome. Um, you can see from his background that he has had a very cross-cultural experience. Um, and you will also remember that, like so a number of texts that we were reading in this course, um, that he was writing in Italian, and so this is going to be a translated text. Um, the story we're reading was originally published in 1965 in a collection of um, works that bridge a gap between fantasy and realism um, and science fiction. And so I'm going to just 
read for you the first paragraph, and you can listen and think about, oh, this is the story I want to read later. This. The Light Years. One night I was, as usual, observing the sky with my telescope. I noticed that a sign was hanging from a galaxy a hundred million light years away. On it was written, I saw you. And one of the things that I'm doing there as a reader is I'm immediately starting to think, oh, this is a story that has something to do with observation. He's observing through a telescope, but the first thing that, that he sees is about him being observed. I saw you. Um, and in the margins of my story, I've actually written a possible theme. Observation? Question mark. Marking that as maybe an important idea in the text because it comes up so quickly and repeatedly. I made a quick calculation. The galaxy's light had taken 100 million years to reach me. And since they saw it there, what was taking place here 100 million years ago, uh, later, the moment when they had seen me must date back 200 million years. Even before I checked my diary to see what I had been doing that day, I was seized by a ghastly presentiment. Exactly 200 million years before, not a day more, nor a day less, something had happened to me that I had always tried to hide. And one of the things that's coming into my mind as a reader is, oh, not only is he concerned with being watched, but um, maybe there's something here that he doesn't want someone to have seen. It's something he's always tried to hide. Um, and one of the things that I'm writing in my notes is, we don't always want to be observed. Guilt? Question mark? I'm thinking maybe about another important idea in the text. Things that we don't want people to see us do. Things we feel guilty about. So that's Tal Calvino, The Light Years. The second choice of text, you get to choose one, um, that we're going to read today, is actually written by um, another woman with a lot of, or a woman, with a lot of cross-cultural experience. Um, Jhumpa Lahiri was born in 1967 um, in London. She herself is Bengali. She writes in English. Um, lives in America, teaches on um, creative writing at Princeton. Um, and won a Pulitzer Prize. She writes mostly in the short story and the novel genre, and she writes realistic fiction. And this story um, from Unaccustomed Earth was published in 2008. So, you can read along. Pranav Chakraborty wasn't technically my father's younger brother. He was a fellow Bengali from Calcutta who had washed up on the barren shores of my parents' social life in the early 70s, when they lived in a rented apartment in Central Square and could number their acquaintances on one hand. And one of the things that's going through my head as a reader there is I pay attention to some of the figurative language washed up on the barren shores of my parents' social life um, and connecting that with um, the count their acquaintances on one hand, and I'm thinking about loneliness um, and that a sense of maybe isolation, and particularly social isolation, that's already coming in those first few sentences to the story. But I had no real uncles in America, and so I was taught to call him Prana Kaku. Accordingly, he called my father Shyamal Da, always addressing him in the polite form, and he called my mother Budi which is how Bengalis are supposed to address an older brother's wife, instead of using her first name, Aparna. After Pranam Kaku was befriended by my parents, he confessed that on the day we met him, he had followed my mother and me for the better part of an afternoon around the streets of Cambridge, where she and I tended to roam after I got out of school. And one of the things I'm thinking about as I'm reading that is um, not only loneliness, but um, that desire to connect with someone. And also, I'm starting to sense that those connections might be deep. There's a lot of talk in this first paragraph about like family relationships.